Welcome back, guys, to another Sunday stream where, unfortunately, we're not taking a look at your work today. Today is another stream where we are going to be talking about a specific topic. <clears throat> You're going to have to excuse my voice. It's going away from me very quickly. I've been a bit sick lately. I've gotten over it, but it really messed my voice up in the process. So um, not going to be as uh, vocal tonight, but I'm going to do my best. Let me mute myself. Um, nonetheless, we are going to be talking about needles today. Now we have videos on the channel and whatnot discussing needles, but I figured we were going to talk about more along the lines of what you might use specific needle groupings for. I get the question a lot in the comments on my YouTube videos, like, Hey, I'm doing this. What needle group, what needles should I use? What are the best, this needles? What are the best that it's so subjective? Why not just have a conversation about it? Uh, we'll touch base on some basic stuff just in case some people are watching that don't know. And that's totally fine. We'll talk about some of that stuff. And then we're going to go in and start maybe taking a look at some work and diagnosing what they may have used, what we might use. And again, everything is subjective here. Everything is subjective. The way I might do something, the needle groupings I might use are totally different from what you might use, from what Annie might use, from what the guy down the road might use. But it's just fun to have a conversation, discuss the things. And also, in the chat along the side, we can see what you guys are saying. We can see what your thoughts are. Hey, this is what I really like to use. This is why I like to use it and whatnot. But nonetheless, before I run my mouth too much, before we even get started here, um, I do want to ask that if you haven't given the stream a like, give the stream a like. Um, and uh, with all that said, I'm going to pull Andy in here real quick. I'm going to say hi to our best friend, Andy. Hey, Dave. I mean, um, back to, it feels like I've gone back to an usual time now because our clocks have just gone forward this weekend. Oh, they did. Oh. So we, we're five hours apart now? Yeah, so we're back five hours apart oh, now. I wonder if it feels um, normal again. I'm not getting uh, thrown out by uh, going an hour, going going live an hour early <laughs> or whatever. But yeah, but all's good. All is good. Um, good. Other than, shall I say, the little story that I've just told you, but anybody that's hanging around at end of stream, I will enlighten everybody at the end of the stream as to the shenanigans that went on in the shop this it's week. It's worth it, it's worth seeing Andy get worked up about and hearing the actual story. So if you guys are here, our usual crew, a little yeah. extra at the end, Andy got a little, the story. bonus feature. A little bonus, bonus feature of <laughs> shall we say what can happen. It's true. It is true. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll jump in by saying hello. I think we've said hello to a few people. We got Brian, Jason, Archie later. Um, you already right. totally Rob. forgot it was live today. Come on, it's Sunday. I can't talk, but I'm trying. Uh, Rob, Mike, Bradley, Justin, Smoke, Double D. And uh, I know Joey was here. Just want to say good evening to you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for always stopping by on Sunday evening. If nothing else, to say hi and drop some two cents on us. Um, if you're here already, again, give the stream a like. Pretty sure I already beat that one to death. What do we got here? Pink Wave. Aha. Uh -huh. Lee, what's going on? Chef. Chef Ken, man. Great to see you here, man. Tanner. Yeah. Um, where's the steak? All right, who's been who's been who's been letting this guy know some information? Um, oh, he, oh, she just came back from Poland. Are you later? Oh, con congrats! I think that sounds cool. Oh no, now trolls are here. We got Danik. Ah oh, man, they're beauty. What's going on? Oh. The people are are arriving. We're just giving. Yeah, floating back now. Zach. CSH Industrial Services, what's going on? Yeah. Again, I apologize for my, my uh, raspiness in the voice. It's spent some time. <clears throat> Got a little bit, doing a little bit of sickness here, trying to recover. Kenneth, what's going on? All right, Andy. Well, like I said, we want to talk about needles tonight. We want to discuss our favorite needle groupings and whatnot and get the chat's input as well. But before we get to that, I figured we better just like briefly go over a few things in the regards to needles, Andy, just so people watching back or maybe people that don't know, 
completely new, you know, just jumping into this live stream. So I have a really, I don't even need to write them down. That's like that basic, but whatever. So we have some <laughs> simple needle stuffs, guys. We can break these needle groupings down into a few categories. We have round liners, simply liners, and they're in a round shape, okay? Um, we have round shaders, right? They're simply, I don't even know why round shaders are called shaders. I would just call them something different. But anyhow, they're round shaders. And uh, a long time ago, I used some hot glue and made some demonstrations here. So if this were a needle grouping pulled tightly together, this is what a seven round liner would look like. Each one of those pencils would be pulled together. Obviously, we zoomed really far in on a seven round liner. That's what it would look like. So a seven round shader is very, very similar to that. Only those needles aren't pulled that tight together. They're spread out a little bit more. That would be the difference, right? So this would be a seven-round shader. This would be a seven-round liner. Okay, we're just going through these real quick. Then you have a mag, a standard mag. We can get in a little more detail on those, but most of the mags people use are going to be, for lack of better words, flat mags. So they're going to be flat across the top, right? Boom, completely flat, double stack there, but flat. This would be a seven mag. And then you can drop into a seven curve mag and the only difference here guys is that the it's curved right it just has a little bit of curve these are also known as soft edge mags round mags but no less those are the two there um so with that out of the way we're gonna i want to briefly just bring up a couple things andy before we get to discussing yeah. the different things here is i have this here that just kind of has a basic few different needle diameters. I think this is probably the most important part when it comes to picking your needles. So obviously you can choose, let's say that seven round liner, but now you need to decide what kind of diameter do you want each one of those seven needles to be. Now the standard, if you hear people say a standard number 12, they're going to be referring to number 12, 0.35 millimeters. That's what, if you go online onto Amazon saying just order a box of seven round liners, more than likely, they're going to be a number 12, okay? Um, could be wrong there, but that's your standard zero point. You can go up. You don't see it as common. At least I don't see it as common. Andy, I don't know if you see a lot of 14s, 0. 0.4. Right. They exist. I just don't see them often. They're not big um, on the selector, if you will. Now, when you hear myself talk about bug pin, I'm usually referring to the number 10. <laughs> Gosh, I feel like I'm going through puberty here. 0 0.30 millimeter as far as bug pin goes. So if I'm saying bug pin, I'm usually referring to a number 10. And then you have what some people will call a double zero. Mm -hmm. or maybe they'll call them, uh, sometimes I get lazy. I call them super bug pins. I don't know why. But that would be a 0 0.25 millimeter. Um, that's the diameter, the thickness of those needles. So again, if you had seven round liner and they were number 12 with each one of those needles being a little thicker the whole line's going to be thicker whereas if you had like a seven round liner and it was a number eight each one of those needles are going to be smaller so your overall line is going to be smaller just things to keep in mind again we're not going to great detail there's a link in the description i'll take you to another video i made a while back that will go into much more detail if you really want to go into it but i just want to cover some basics here before we start giving our opinions and getting into a full-on conversation so that's pretty much that most common that i use really and we i know that andy does dip down to the eights i do as well but bulk of my needles are going to be 12s and 10s just yeah. just on the side there so the next thing again this might help you to visualize what i mean by diameter i mean it's i know it's not rocket science okay but nonetheless the thickness of each one of those needles. So number 12 is obviously going to be thicker and we get thinner as we go down. If it was a number 14, it's going to get bigger. Also on your boxes of needles, each needle cartridge is going to say on the back of it, um, it's going to start with the diameter. So it might say 12 and then it might say 07. So you have to standard number 12, seven needles. Um, hopefully that makes sense as well. Okay. With that out of the way, there is also another topic that you can get into. We're not going to get too deep into it, but it also goes into tapers. You have your medium taper. You have a long taper, extra long taper, and then you can really get wild with that as well. Uh, most needle groupings are in the medium to long taper uh, environment. But again, 
that's what we're talking about today. So then we go into it. You have a little bit of a general idea. And again, a link in the description. If you really want to go and watch a full, I think, 20 minute video I have going into more detail about each one of these uh, groupings and whatnot. So, Andy, let me know what are your thoughts on the needle groupings and what what are your go to needles? Well, like you said, I mean, you, you just covered shall we say, the groupings, the sizings, the gauge. So for what it is, the gauge 12, 10, or 8. I mean, I'll be honest, I've never really seen a 14. Um, but if you think back, like I can, uh, <laughs> I'm just a little bit older than you, um, <laughs> there were only really standards, 12s. Yeah, okay. There were only really so standards, 12s. There were no long tapers. It were all, everything was standard. Um so as things have come along for me, for me the the best, shall we say, um, leap forward is the introduction of book pins. Tapers is not so much, but the book pins. Um, like we said, initially the O eights were classed as bug pins, but then the tens were in, and they both just get classed as bug pins. Right. Uh, like you say, the O eights both get classed as bug pins, both call them bug pins. The eights get called as double zeros. Um, I refer to them bug pins, and if I actually remember, I will call the O eight a double zero. Um, along with, then you've also got to think that there is other things. You've got you've got open liners. Mm. Then you've got tights, super tights, but a lot of it, for what I think of as a lot of it is just bloatware. It's just, you know, just absolute bloatware. You'd better yourself. If you didn't have, getting back to your question, if you didn't have your specific set of go to needles that work for you to do everything, you would end up with a cupboard um, with 10, 12, 20 different types of needles of different configurations that are more than likely go out of date before you actually finished using them. Uh, uh, no. But I, all my liners, all my li liners are of, well, I'm not going to tell a lie here. 98% of my liners are standard 12 gauge. Or yeah. three, five. They'll be, there'll be a medium taper. I'll tell you that now. There'll be a medium taper, um, 035, um, size 12. I do then have an only, an only in um, three round liners. I have some tens, um, bug pins, tens, three round liners, and I have some double zero, three round liners. Um, and that is all my liners that is all my liners um, but i do use 11s 9s 7s 5s and 3s that's that's my that is my liner configuration from there in all my mags are size 10 bumpings i don't have any standards at whatsoever yeah. i don't have any standards I shared colour pack and everything with a size 10 bulk pin magnum. Um, and that is it. And I have a seven. And the only magnums I use, the only size magnums I use, I have sevens, 15s, and 25s. That is it. I only carry three magnums. I do everything with them three. I'd probably say that my favourites out of them are the sevens and the 15s. For sure just because of the style of tattooing that I do, is my 7s and my 15s. And from there on in, I only carry two round shaders, which is a 9 round shader and a 14 round shader in a 12 standard medium taper. And that is all my needles. And there's nothing, yeah. there's nothing I, can, I can't do with that configuration. Um, and uh, it just works for me, does that? It, for everything that I do, 
it keeps it nice and simple. It keeps the cupboard nice and simple. Me and I'm not having to think. Oh, I need a double double zero three with a standard seven. Do you know what I mean? I want an open. Oh, yeah. um, and that's what it's all about. You, streamlining everything to a point that works for you that's also let's be right let's come and be candid that's cost effective yeah yeah i mean that's i think that's part of it too is i remember um buying so many needles and i'd hear somebody say something about using this kind of needle so i was like all right that's the kind of needle i have to use so i bought a bunch of that stuff and um just truly the painful road of trial and error and figuring out what worked but um yeah and realizing that if you can really figure out what needle groupings you really are comfortable using and are kind of a jack of all trades for your style and stuff, you can really cut down on it. You could literally almost pull out every needle you use every time for every every tattoo to some degree. Some you won't need, but you could. So our 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 needle um, selection is pretty similar, Andy. Yeah. Um, for, for myself, I'm looking at a five round liner. All right, so my liners. In my round shaders are all number 12, standard, medium taper, um, needles. They're all standard. I, I like to keep it standard. So for when it comes around liners, like five round liners, and I like, oh, well, I lied. Okay, so I like five round liners, and I like number three, three round liner bug pins three round liner bug pins five round liners that's it when it comes around lines that's really all i care to use give me a five round liner standard five round liner give me a number 10 three round liner and then um a five round shader a nine round shader and then if i really had to have a, another one it'd be a 14 round shader um yeah so that's it really but bulk of what i use is a five round liner five round shader and a three round liner in a bug pin um so that's bulk of it and then when it comes to the mags i don't even we've already discussed this i don't even mess with the flat mags uh, no. or the, this style of a mag don't mind my markers and mag form this, these kind of flat mags i know there's different lingo for them right i really don't even mess with them mess with the curved mags and the yeah. bulk of the reason for this guys is is i'll use my arm here as an example when when you push this is hard to get on camera when you push in your, your skin wants to divot down in the middle, right? So the sides end up gouging in more so, if you will. Whereas the curve mag kind of contours a bit more to the push in, right? So you get more of an even and less of a rakey look. And it's just easier to turn your hand a little bit on the side sometimes if you want to use the sides, whatever. So you use purely curved mags. And I use only number 10 bug pin magnums uh, for pretty much everything. And most of the time it's shading. But again, my favorites as well, Andy, are a number seven, or not a number seven, a seven curved mag, a 15 curved mag, and um, anywhere from a 19 to a 25 curved mag. But if you're going to go from a 15, you might as well go to a 25. At that point, why get all the ones in between when really that 15 is going to do most of it up to you hit that 25 point. And that gives you those bigger mags for either bigger areas or you really want a softer look because um, obviously – you can get a lot more coverage, smooth coverage. Um, so anyhow, that's that. Now, my next question, I want to ask the chat, and then I want to ask you, Andy. Yep. Which I think it's a pretty – I mean, I think we can come up with this, but if you can only have three needles, three. Yeah. This three. is really hard because you get people are really getting into tattooing. They're like, look, I want to get a good needle. I bought all this stuff. I don't know. Should I get this? They're saying get five round liners. They're saying get seven round liners. People tell me nine round liners are great. Then they say get a three round liner, but then they're talking about these shaders and mag, blah, blah, blah. Three boxes. What would you get? Well, let these answer first because I I know the three boxes that I pick. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it. I'm pretty positive I'm, I know it. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty positive that I've got what I pick. Um, and I'd be interested to see. Oh, people are getting some in here. Yeah. Okay. We got Joey coming in with a five round liner, nine curve mag and fifteen curve mag. Okay. All right. I do like the selection. It's very close. But here we go. Seven round, three round. 
11 mag. I'm, I don't know. Hey, I'm dumping. I'm wondering, is that a curve? Do you like just standard mags? Is that a curve mag? Or are you just assuming that? I'm just curious. But you like 11 mag, seven round liner, three round liner. Okay. I get down with Five that. Round liner, seven round shed, a 15 oh, round mag. Yeah. We got uh, Jeremy, 357. <laughs> what is that? Three round liner, five round liner, seven round liner, three mags, five mags, seven mags. I like that. Leaving it up to interpretation. Yeah. Danik with the five round liner, nine round mag. And a guitar string. That's it, Danik. That guitar string's coming in clutch, man. Yep. Whatever you need to do, you can meld that little guitar string in. Get them prison reps in. You never know when you're going to need that security in the bank. But I could get down with the five round liner, nine round mag. Let's see. Well, who else is up? We got nine round liner, three round liner, nine round shader. Sometimes it's awesome because we don't know what these, what they're, what kind of work they do. Like I don't know what mm. um, Goldstein does, but to him, he wants a nine round liner. A three round liner or nine round shader. Interesting. Mike with the five round liner, seven round shader, 15 round mag. Dude, you're coming in clutch as my man. You're getting pretty close to what I would go with, but I'm liking that a little bit. But that's great. Everyone's so different. Well, 11 curve mag. Go ahead, Andy. No, well, the mag's not far off where I would be. Yeah. Well, closest, what you to, what I, closest to what I pick for, for what I do and as a as an overall bag of tricks, you know, as an overall bag of tricks um, set up, it, it wasn't far off. <coughs> well, what would you go with, Andy? Right. If it was I'll me. The screen as people put them up so other people can see what other people are thinking. Yeah. If it was me <laughs> and I only had to have three needles, yes. the type that I do, I would have. Bearing in mind, I'm also talking about how my knee my current brand of needles works yeah because yeah we know us for the fact that certain brands of needles can be tighter further apart do you understand what i mean yeah oh because yeah different brands have you know just like a shoe, different tightness they, they're the same size but like a nike might make a little smaller where adidas might make a little larger yeah so if i had to go it would be a standard seven round liner. Okay. I would be with a size 10 bug pin, 15 curve mag. Yeah. And then the other one for an all rounder would be the nine round shader. All right. So you got a seven round liner, a nine round shader and a 15 curve mag. Yeah. That's that. I'm pretty close. To, I think a lot. I see a lot of people here are going with, I need my liner. I need my round shader in case I run into some fat lineage, and I need an all-round mag. And my all-round mag, I'm with you, Andy. I'd love a seven-curve mag. Could do some of that nice smaller yeah. stuff. Just, but really, I can do it with a 15-curve mag. It gives me the ability to go larger. I can go smaller. 15-curve mag, a five-round liner, and I'm torn between. I probably go with the seven-round shader actually, because I want a five and I want a nine. But with the seven, I could probably get away with. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll go with seven round shader, five round liner, 15 curve mag. Right. The curve mag is bug pin number 10. The rest are 12. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Now, Andy, um, next question that I got. Uh, let's, actually, I'm going to read a few. What, 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 let's see if anybody's got anything crazy in the chat out, outside of. Gotta have a three for simple shading. If that's your style, man, I don't do a lot of simple shading, Andy. I don't. Um, there's some pieces that come in and require me to do it and I do it. Uh, but it's not really my forte. I know how to do it. It's a good tool to have to use when you need it, but it's not like my go-to thing. How about you? Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, you can simple shit. I can simple shit with the current configuration of my, uh, with the current configuration of needles and how taking into account that I use the mass pro, and they are quite a tight grouping, is a mass pro cartridges. Yeah. Um, like the seven round liner, I could probably squeeze anything from, should we say, quite a heavy seven line right through to what would be a five, you, you know, a normal five round line. I can get a really fine line with a seven round liner. Um, so, I can get the stipple shading out with it, but what I don't, the one thing that I wouldn't like with the stipple shading of a seven round liner, and I'll be honest, 
would be the actual size of the dots that it creates. Because yeah. if I'm if I'm stipple shading, <laughs> I usually either like to try and use a three, a standard three. Yeah. Or a five at a push, depending on how big the end. Because I just like I just think on stipple shading that the the dots that it creates need to be smaller and denser that way then that they're denser and close. And I think it just looks of a, a neater finish, you know. Yeah. With that, I just I, and that's that's where I'm probably if you had to do a lot of stipple shading, then yeah, I wouldn't get away with just using three. I would have to put another needle configuration in there just for that factor, and then it probably would be a standard three that I'd put I'd put in in there for it. But yeah. I'm like you, I don't do a ton of it. Can do it, yeah. I've got it in the bag, but I don't do a ton of it. I don't either. I don't either. And funny enough, I've said it in the chat too. When I do, that's the time where I will use a number 10 five round liner. Um, it's a nice in between. I think it has a little more structure to it. Uh, and I don't know if that's ne necessary, but I feel like it just has a little extra strength to it. Um, whereas drop down to like a bug pin three, I just feel it's a little bit more flimsy. But again, that's not my forte. You know what I mean? Other people have worked with those tiny needles, to get comfortable with that. Yeah. Thing. Not my forte, and that's what's awesome. But about, you know, talking to people. But there again, like you said, other people work with their needles. But how many times have we seen work that's been done with what I would class as poor needle choice? A lot, a lot. Even I question on some of my own needle choice sometimes, especially when it's over. You go, hmm, or even times where you can get a little lazy and not drop down to that other needle grouping when you should so yeah i mean needle choice is so big yeah. often again the easiest way to, for, to look at it, in my opinion for people who are like fresh to this thing is like truly like a paintbrush you know if you're painting what kind of brush are you going to use what kind of lining thing are you going to use um because the, the size needle grouping uses what's gonna what's gonna dictate the thickness of said lines um, and the other thing is deciding when to, they call a round shader, a round shader. I have never shaded with a round shader. I think it just got the name because somebody gave it the name. I would call it what, like a round, just a thick round liner, a spread out round liner. I mean, I, I just, I, I would actually class it as more of an open round liner. There um, you go. An open round liner. That sounds way better. Yeah. I, I would, I would class it in the categories if I were for that it is an open round liner. I mean, Let's be right. I mean, curved mags, you can get them down to a five curve mag. So, I mean, that thing's tiny in itself, and you can get a five curve mag in bug pin. So, yeah. it's definitely tiny. Um, yeah. And, like I say, it's. I see more. What should we say? Hiccups and shortcuts were lining in the wrong choice of liner. Or round shade uh, for the point of they'll use a final round shader on the line, uh, round liner on the line when, and maybe try and build it up rather than just getting one good pass with the next size liner up. Yeah, and I see that, and then the people then wonder why the lines are so sketchy. Yeah, it's a. That's a good point, and I think uh, here we got Double D asking a question as well. So what do I use for a shader? I may have missed it. So what do I use for a shader? So uh, I think we're going to answer this question in two ways. First, I'm going to say that the words round shader, I think, throws people off when they're new. It did for me. I thought, well, I can't really shade with these unless I'm stempling with these large needle groupings or at least these open liners, we could call them, I suppose. Um and uh, if you're looking for a really thick stippling, I guess, right? But uh, so I, I use round shaders for, like Andy was talking about, we, for lining. You can get a thicker line out of them, and they're good for packing color. They just are nice because uh, those needles, while they're, while they're spread out a little bit, they're still pretty close together, okay? So you have a good concentration in an area, and it's almost like taking a Sharpie marker, right? something like this and you're going in there and you can really put some fine color in places and pack this out and whatnot. Um, you can do the same with a liner if need be small enough, big enough. But anyhow, I would shade 
what you should shade with, in my opinion, would be a curved mag. I mean, you could again. This is such a subjective thing. You could you could shade with a number ten three round liner. You could shade with a any needle grouping, right? You could technically shade with a round shader. But what I tell people when they're getting into this, I would look at your mags more as your shaders, more as your paint brushes, if you will. You can get them small down to a three, a five round magnums. So I, I would I would try your hand at shading with round mags. Um, or curve mags, Andy. What what, what do you want to say in regards I mean, to the statement? Because I mean, I'm not 100 percent sure where he's coming from. Well, no, I mean, my analogy to him would be if you think about if you was decorating in your house and you was going to paint a big wall, for the bulk of the area, you would you would get a roller out. You would have a paint roller, you know, right. which they're your curved magnums. So for big areas, and if you've got a lot of covering, a lot of area to do, you would use your roller, which is your curved magnum. In you go. You know what I mean? You've got somewhere that's a little bit tighter and you can't quite get your roller in, but needs to cover a slightly bigger area, but not big, not as big an area as what the roller would, but it's just some tight, smaller areas that you can't, that maybe just can't quite get in. Then I would see about looking at around shader to to do that little bit and yeah. then when you come and then when you come to cutting in your edges which are your lines you look at using either a liner or again if you can get in with a small round shader you can do it with that or you go in with your liner so that's my analogy of how i would look look at it you know for choosing it um so if yeah. you're doing the big wall and you're cutting the edges in, which are your lines. You'd use. You wouldn't do it with a roller. You'd do it with a, a small, a lot smaller paintbrush, which is your round liner. The big area on your wall, and the bigger the area, the bigger the mag. That's your roller. On it goes. And then anywhere in between that you can't get the roller or the liner that's a little bit too tight, then think about using a round shader. And that's the best analogy I can actually give. Yeah. No, that's that's the that's the best way to explain it, especially. And you can take that in terms of packing color. Obviously, packing black, same as packing color, or shading. If you have a large area, you have to shade. Obviously, it's going to dictate a larger needle grouping. And I know people that do full-on color, wonderful looking color pieces with just variations on round mags. I mean, mm -hmm. round shaders. Um, they make big round shaders, smaller ones, and people just really are used to using them. They do amazing stuff. People that mix both together. Um, needle grouping and choosing the right needle grouping is one step under less confusing than voltage to hand speed stuff. That is probably really gets hard to explain to people. But needles can be tricky, too, because sometimes you can take in as much information as you want. But until you get out there and really try them out and test them a little bit, put your feet in the water and realize what you like and what you don't like, um, you're still going to be, you know, kind of spinning your head trying to figure out what do I need. But um, I usually tell people, and again, obviously, we're talking people who are really unsure, I would stick with some standard number 12 needle groupings when it comes to your round liners and round shaders. Just in the beginning, um, you're going to have a little bit more resistance in them, which is going to get you a little more comfortable feeling skin breaking, feeling skin vibrations. If you start off, um, and many have, and they have succeeded, but if you start off with a very small needle groupings, um, a really small bug pin needle groupings, there you're going to find that there's very little resistance in the skin. You're not going to, if you hear people talking about feeling skin vibrations and hearing the skin crack as you line, you know, if you're listening closely, um, you might, you're you not going to find that when you're using a really fine needle groupings because they're, they're just piercing so quickly, right? So that's why you get a lot of people that send in work early on, and it's like blown out everywhere. And there looks like they've gone over it 45 times because the, not, the line is tiny and it's so sharp that it's just whoosh, puncturing stuff, blowing stuff out. But So anyhow, those are just opinions <laughs> on that. Um, yeah. So guys, if you have any questions about needles, or anything like that, let us know in the chat. Um, we'll take some questions in regards to needles. And then here in a little while, I think we'll jump over and maybe take a look at some work on the internet and together decide maybe what needle groupings they may have used to make said tattoos 
or what needle groupings you would use to make that tattoo. So that's just a, something yeah. different. You see, that's again, that's subjective, isn't it? There, because it's so subjective. Because, like I say, you, you go through, you look at people's work, and it's well, I'd use this, I'd use that. It's what you're. It's a little bit of trial and error has gone in through all this, and you you found your needle configurations that you're comfortable with using day in day out. Yeah. Um, and again, that what what work for you as a whole, all round without having 30,000 boxes of different needles, oh. yeah. you know, to go through. Yeah. Because it's okay if, I don't know, if I were only doing two tattoos a week, do you know what I mean? And sure. I were doing a specific um, style of tattooing all the time. Right. I'd, I'd probably tailor my cartridges down a, a little bit more. I would you know? too. I would. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But you know yourself when you work in, shall we say, in like a shop environment where you've got a constant turnover of people wanting anything from simplistic text to um, colour work to black and grey to true greys, everything along that line, geometrics, the lot, when you've got to mix all that bag of tricks into one, because your your studio's got to turn, it's got to turn over them tattoos. Because if not, at the end of the day, if not, you'd be broke. You won't. You know what I mean? If if you didn't cover a multitude of sins when you were doing this full time to start with, you'd end up broke. You'd end up with yeah. such a small clientele. So in that again, that's when it takes a little bit of tailoring your needles to and your cartridges to a point that covers all that in a whole as as a standard without having so many boxes you know laid out behind you to start trolling through that lot as well. Yeah, I I I agree with you there quite a bit. Um well luckily somebody brought up some questions i thought by right i was looking um let's see do you think a round shader would cause less trauma than a round liner um i, I here's what i'll say about that i imagine if you're using a round shader again most of this is all assumptions guys so take everything with a grain of salt if you're going to dip into the round shader game you're probably dipping into a larger you want to go a little bit larger right so I want to use a five round liner, anything larger than that, you can go up. But at some point, maybe like a nine round liner might equate to about a five round shader. It depends on your brand. So I would prefer to use a five round shader over that nine round liner, even though they're both going to give me a similar line weight. Uh, because the five round shader, in my opinion, is a less traumatic to the skin. Uh, they're spread out a little bit more, making it supposed technically a less dense line. I don't really notice it. It goes in the skin smoother. Um, it lays down lines better. So I would say, in my opinion, Andy, a round shader, um, if trying to get the same line weight out of a round liner, is less traumatic than a round liner. Um, you see, I'd probably beg to differ. Yeah. Um, I'd say they're about exactly the same, depending okay. on how you're applying them. Because if you're not know put a line in, and you know how to put it in like put it in right, whether you put it in with a round liner or a round shader, is as long as your technique's right, your voltage is right, your hand speed's right, and everything, as a tattoo artist, you should in theory, you should be able to put a line in with a nine round shader the same as what you would with a nine round liner and only cause the same amount of that, same amount of trauma to the skin what i what i have found myself certain areas of the body um i would use around liner because of of the taper especially if you've got skin that's very loose and very hard to stretch just that you've got more piercing point sure you know, if you yeah. can't get the underwear around shaders a bit more dull 
But on the flip side, what I will say, if you've ever pulled a line with a round liner, uh, let's say you pull, let's say you pull an, um, a line with an 11 round liner, and then you pull a line with a nine round shader. No matter what you do, I always think the line with the nine round shader looks more crisp, less, you know, oh, pulling the line with the line round shade, it always seems to give you short, less, you know, deviations in the line. Yeah, yeah, and I just, I just think that five needles penetrating the skin has got to be less traumatic than nine needles, even though either or will, if done correctly, aren't exactly hurting anything, but less needles would probably be less traumatic to the skin. If getting the same outcome. Yeah. But I do like that idea of in those stretchier areas where maybe having a bit more there would probably help a bit. Just just seems to it just seems to help because you you look at a round liner and well like we say, basically the end of it is like that, isn't it? You know what I mean? A round liner comes yeah. to a, a, a tight pond. Whereas yeah. in theory around around shader might have a bit of a you know duller point on it because it's more circular um um that I don't think. that's a mag but if you were if you were taking you would be taking two needle groupings right so like yeah. this is a seven round liner and this is a seven round shader now this is going to give me a bigger lining. Yes. Liner. Now if I wanted a seven round shader thickness, I need to go up to a nine round liner. So in the end, both circle ends are going to be the same. Only this is going to require less needles to create the same line weight. Um, so I think you still end up with about the same mass, same circular amount. You just have less needles going in. I think that's why I've become a fan of round shaders because now I think the downside there too, though, Andy, though, is when using a round shader, I think you got to be extra careful of where your needle, how you're running those needles because they're spread out a little bit more. If you're coming at it a bit more of an angle, you lose a little bit of the thickness easier because there's less needle group needles in the grouping. But Hey, I like that. I like that. We disagree on this, Andy. I would like you guys to let us know what you think yeah, <laughs> I mean, in the comments below. Does it matter? Cause it's all, it's all relative, really. Yeah. Um, oh, no, I have areas that I prefer. I have areas on the body. And the area, I say I have areas on the body, depending on the client, shall we say. Um, and you've got every client is different because this is another part of that. When you've got to assess every client on right. their own merits, that depending on how their skin is, the age of it, how it lays, shall we say, should be quite candid the size of the person um that some areas would for me i'd be like that round liner that area there it's nice and tight sort of thing like i think yep yeah, i'll bust a you know i'll bust a round shader out yeah it's yeah just with so you say just a bit of experience and that. It's and like, do you think it's comfort too? Do you think we just get comfortable using certain needle groupings? So definitely, definitely. You just get used to it. And you're like, no, it has to be this. It's just, it works. And um, yeah, I think a lot of it really does and at the end of the day. Know, and another part, when you say, do you think it's yeah, yeah, comfortable? Because it's like what we was on about, and I think we were on about off camera about machines that we use. Yeah. You get so comfortable with a certain type of machine, you get so comfortable with a certain type of either shader, liner, or whatever, that, and you know how it performs, you know exactly how it's gonna, that, that just, because you've been using it for so long and doing it for so long, that takes one, that takes one factor completely out of the equation of the tattoo. Right. You don't have to yeah. think about it. You know how right. that line is exactly gonna go in, so all you've got to focus on is putting that line in, job done, carry on, I can just focus on what I'm doing with this tower. I don't have to focus on what, whether this, is going to be the right one to do the job or anything like that. Same as with the machine that you're used to. And that's why a lot of us um, don't like to change the machines very often when you found something that works. Because yeah. you know that, 
I pick that machine up, I look at that skin, and I got, I got five round line. Now, that skin, I'm going to start at 6.4 volts. Um, you set it up at 6.4 volts. You go pull your line. Mm, yeah, I'll either up my voltage just a tiny little bit, or I'll down it. You, do you understand? And it takes all that. It it takes a lot of uh, configuration, a lot of stress, a lot of added thinking and everything away from tattooing when you're doing it on a regular super regular basis you just get to know what everything works and works for you and that's what it's all about i agree i agree and that's part of the battle here is like you can listen to everybody's suggestions and i think you should take a little bit from everybody but uh be small in your ordering of needles get a little a box at a time and, and see how it goes uh danik i am pretty far behind guys i'm just moving through it says, uh, I have a question about needles. When you move to Texas and realize how many shitty boxes and needles you have, are you giving them to smoke? Yes, yeah, smoke. Well, smoke's not in Texas, but maybe I'll send them a, uh, a care package with some needle smoke just for being a uh, frequent flyer here. Um, hey, Brian. He asks, what needle brands are best? What's up, Annie? No, just Brian. It says, that Brian's put on English is pretty bad, guys. I am French from Canada. Well, if you're French from Canada, uh, Brian, you're not doing bad in this chat for your English, buddy. Yeah, no, I've, I didn't, wouldn't have guessed. I want, a, I, I want a guest. He's doing, uh, he's doing quite well. Uh, Double D, what needle brands are best? Which ones to avoid? Uh, the avoid <laughs> one is more questionable because I think there's quite a few brands you could avoid. But, um, again, it's just as subjective as the ones we like the most. But I think me and Andy are both in the same boat for the best bang for your buck is going to be currently the, um, yeah. the currently, Mass Pro cartridges. Yeah, currently I'd say Mass Pro, bang for, your bang um, for your buck. I've gone through thousands, like I said, and I've said it every week for about the last four weeks, I've gone through thousands of them. Um, I've maybe had an handful. None of them have actually failed. No, I, I will, out of all them, I have had zero failure. And I mean, absolute yeah. zero failure. And what, there's probably just been a dozen that I've either not liked for one reason, they've either been maybe not dropped the ink as how, how I've wanted it to drop or as soon as it seems. Yeah. I've stopped using the cartridge because I've, it didn't sound right. It was working fine, but... It just didn't sound right, so I've taken it out and I've thrown it away. Got another one out, right? Put it in, yeah, and it sounded perfect. Um, but I've had zero, uh, two, uh, two, 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 two and a half thousand, or whatever it is, I've had absolutely zero break on it. That's yeah, and I was with some other brands, ones I actually liked would often, well, not, I wouldn't say often, but occasionally have the tips blow off of them. So you go to do something, all of a sudden the, the plastic at the top blows out, and now that you got the needle hanging out, I mean, it's no big deal, you take it off, you throw it away or he, whatever you dispose of it, you get another one, but it's not the greatest look in the world. So when that happens, it does suck. I've not had any of those issues with the current brand either. No uh, membrane breaking either, which is pretty good. Again, for the money, you really can't beat it. Um, above, beyond that, I still am a fan of the Amel Elliott cartridges, uh, but they are quite a bit more expensive. And the difference between the two, in my personal opinion, is not a big difference. Um, that's just me being completely honest. Mm -hmm. Uh, Double D, I do want to say thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it, man. I'm glad that you're learning, man. I really am glad that um, we can help somebody out here because, yeah. um, you know, sometimes we feel like broken records talking about the same stuff uh, in every live stream, sort of. You know how it gets intermixed and we end up talking about similar things, but I'm really glad that we're able to help you out, man. It's like you said as well. Yeah, and started off about needles, but if it spreads out into machines, back to vault, it's, we do it each week. There's new people in the chat each week as well that have missed other ones. Um, and it's like you say, if, if somebody's going away and they're learning somewhere, it makes, it makes it all worth it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whether, whether they take the information and they use 100% of it, or whether they take the information that you're giving in the chat that you're giving and only use 10% of it and then adapt from there out, um, but they've still learned something, then it makes it all worth it, to, to be fair, uh, in my eyes. It really does. It really does. In fact, somebody's like, hey, maybe I got something out of today. That's good. We just yeah. never know. It's kind of the goal. You hope that maybe somebody watched it back and was like, hey, cool. I didn't catch this somewhere else, you know. It's, um, and like I said, it, it's uh, like the critiques, in it? We aren't. We haven't stopped the critiques. We just <laughs> yeah. moved them. 
Um, yes, it's a good point. Let me pull which, your... It's it's not so because the kids, unfortunately, for as much as you love do, love doing them, it got to the point that some some weeks they were only we could only let the emails come in as the notification went live, and then some weeks you still had too many to get through. Yeah, and and you know yourself, some weeks we've been on three hours, nearly four hours trying to oh, do sure. get through them. Um, but this way, we just moved it around, uh, moved it over, and it seems to have cut them down a little bit. You can just spend, but like last week, we went, <laughs> and we were there nearly three hours. Yeah, but we got through everybody's, and we we're able to spend yeah. a little extra time, not a ton, but an extra minute or two on each person's email, which yeah. is so much nicer when you know you can do that. And that's because the people who were wor- looking at their work are the ones who are, you know, unfortunately at this point, really tracking what's going on because if you want your work critiqued right now, you got to go to the YouTube channel scrolling at the bottom of the screen. It's the underscore tattoo underscore studio. That's Andy's YouTube channel. And and that's where for the next little while here, we're going to be doing the tattoo critiques. So the great thing there is you can send your work in anytime from now to like Wednesday or Thursday of this week. And we're going to open up his email and he's going to open up his email address on like Wednesday or Thursday this week. And we're just going to start from the bottom and go through them. And we're going to take a look at your work, give you our two cents. You know, we used to do that here, but we're just mixing it up a little bit, almost for ourselves and maybe for viewers' purposes. But nonetheless, guys, if you could go to the underscore tattoo underscore studio, subscribe to Andy's channel, turn notifications so you know when we go live over there. And then also, if you got any work, you're like, yeah, um, take a look at my stuff. Let me know what you two idiots think. We'll do that. And that is critique my tattoo at gmail.com that's at the bottom of the screen so thank you for reminding me andy i wanted to put that out there and again no problem did not do that so thank you um okay i hope everyone's having all right alicia has said i hope everyone's having a blessed day so i hope they are too i hope so i do thank everybody for hanging out here with us it's super nice sunday and it's uh chill out and hang out time in it so it's uh it's uh, it's going to be a good day. Um, yeah, managed to, I managed to uh, <laughs> scramble together today and uh, get up the uh, uh, bit of a review and my findings. You know the top video. Oh, did you put out a video today, Andy? Yeah, yeah, it was up and it's up and running. Oh, uh, go, check, go check it out, guys. And uh, I still, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. It took a lot of getting over sitting there with a pair of headphones, listening to some daft Yorkshire person talking back to me. You know, <laughs> uh, you're looking at screen and you can see yourself, but you can hear yourself. You can hear in your ears. It's like, do I really sound like that? Yeah, it, it's taken a long time to get used to to seeing and hearing yourself and accepting that. Who cares? Um, but it's still it is weird. And uh, yeah. And then the downside of that is you can never go back and watch any of your old videos because you'll just be like, whoa. Whoa. Uh, on a side note, somebody did ask a pretty decent question. Timothy asked, will all cartridge needles work in tattoo pens? I will say, I mean, Andy, again, you have your own opinion, that um, most will. Like, from my experience, like 90% of all needles, I think I've only had one brand that didn't really work in the needles, in the machines, and that was because of the manufacturing. It was just so poor that you could see where the, the plastic cartridge is were like manufactured and peeled off of like, like if you had a toy models and you bend the little pieces off to build your model, well, the little plastic tabs were stuck on each end. So you'd have to have like a razor blade to peel the little shade, little plastic piece off. Then you could put them in. And, um, and those were big wasp needles. So those are my least favorite needle cartridges. I own a ton of them. So I will be sending those to smoke. No. <laughs> but anyhow, they're from a long time ago too. They're, they're, they're not bad or anything, but I just, you know, you're just going to have to peel off the little side pieces there. But those are the only ones I've ever had that didn't work, Andy. But um, yourself? The, if I remember rightly, when the pen machines and cartridges and everything started coming around, they used to be, I think they're all pretty much standardized now. But I think, and I don't know whether it was stigma, seems to come back. I, I, I'm not 100% on that and don't hold me to it that I think stigma and stigma pens and stigma used to do their own cartridge to fit their own pen. 
Oh, really? Oh, that's kind of grimy. I'm, you know, I'm surprised Cheyenne hasn't done that stuff because yeah. they had their own proprietary like connections, yeah. their own proprietary. Got to use our power supplies and. I'm not saying yeah. that Cheyenne makes a I, good product. I mean, it's just. I think. You know, I not being think, any Apple tattoo machines. Yeah, I think they're pretty much you know standardized now. Um, and I know that was a while ago, and I'm sure I'll get trolled by Danik again for saying that a while ago. <laughs> something about my age, um, <coughs> uh, that, but I'm sure it was a, a long, long while ago that um, that happened. I think most places, most, I think they're all pretty standard, you know, standardized now. Yeah, Danik wants to make sure that everyone's having a, bl a blessed day, except for Andy. Except for me. Um, we're yeah. making sure that he's oh, having a uh, yeah. yeah. Sounds like a lot of people agree about the uh, big wasp. Um, yeah, I I went that route because early on a lot of people were asking me in the YouTube videos because they were available on Amazon. Hey, um how are the big wasp meals, big wasp meals? And now big wasp has had several different versions, like their B ones versus whatever's now. <clears throat> I've had a couple of them and uh, I just didn't like them. I didn't like a lot of them, but the simple fact that they were just so cheap when it came to the, the, the basics of like shaving the plastic off the ends, it was uh, quite annoying. So yeah, I've never gone back. I've never worked with them. Uh, from there on, there much, I know that Big Wasp is also associated with Bronk. Maybe I could be wrong. I could be wrong there, but their machines aren't bad. If they are, it just wasn't the biggest fan of their needles. Um, what's going on? Okay, that's that. But again, you see, there's so there's so many needles, and and what I will stand, what I will put out there, not every not every needle, not every needle brand is suitable for each person. So just because I like Mass Pro yeah. or Dave likes Mass Pro doesn't mean we'll let you know what we think and we like them, but it doesn't mean to say that it's not that they're bad or you just might not feel that they're right for our, you know, for how you tattle. Yeah. Or, and it, it's not like I'm trying to put anything out there. It's just, it's weird because I've used needles where people have raved about them and especially the, um, oh, Tatsol, Tatsol Envy Gen 2s. Okay. Um, had a lot of people raving about them. And they weren't cheap at the time. And I bought some. And they were awful. I hated them. They were sharp. I yeah. Just couldn't, I just couldn't work with them. I just didn't like them. I, just, I don't know what it was. I just pff, couldn't wait to get rid of them. It's weird how that works, huh? Yeah. It could be a great needle to some, but... Not to another. And that's always the scary part, even when talking about machines and everything. It's like somebody can get super hyped on hearing you talk about a machine, um, especially when you get up in the high dollar range, you know, and they're like, oh, wow, this is it. This is, you know, I really think this is for me. All to find out that what was the hype all about? Like, is it? Well, or sometimes we put so much, um, we have so much of an expectation that a machine is going to do for us, you know, and it's like, yeah, it's like playing an instrument. It's like, well, I'm not doing too good with this cheap one, but if I get the best guitar they make, surely I will be better. Like it will, you got to have, you got to have something there. You know what I mean? The, the, the thing isn't going to play itself. The machine isn't going to tattoo itself. You know, you got to have some onus behind the wheel. Yeah. Well, you made me laugh there, Dave. You just really made me laugh because, like I said to you, I put that video out, you know, a little bit of a review of my thoughts, you know, after a month yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah. Thought. And I put it out and I put a link into it and everybody, yeah, I get it. And somebody, somebody put in chat, I can't remember, and I know they come over here on the channel and they usually on chat and I just cannot remember the name off the top of my head. And they put, oh, I might give that a try. And they come back and they went, it's only X amount of money. Is that right or is it fair? <laughs> no, that's right. That's what I'm telling you. That's right. And if you, actually, if you actually go to the link that's in the video, because they've got a sale on it again at the minute, yeah, so it's even lower. Yeah. 
but you can be what they've done is because the snails on it and it's even lower but it's still above just above the minimum spend to claim the coupon in their store so that you can claim the coupon and get another ten dollars off it oh, so you can oh. get it in the sale and another ten dollars off it that's crazy it's that's not crazy. absolutely yeah. not so um, how, what does it end up being at with the coupon? Well, it worked out at, um, what did I work at? It worked out at the minute with the coupon code. Listen to this. At the minute with the coupon code, Dave. Yeah. Um, it works out at, for the machine and the battery, I think it works out at £78. Mm. So that will just give me the cal calculator so that's must be 78 $93.60 okay not bad not bad that's for the machine and the battery one battery one machine for under one $100 one $93.60 shipped wow that's pretty great anniversary sale you know what's uh, funny oh, Rob, is Rob got his for 140 with extra battery yeah, Seven yeah, with extra best. battery, ship, tax, and everything. What's funny is so he for $140 got two batteries and a machine. So even if the um, machine shits the bed, let's say like day one, boom, you still got two batteries for 140 bucks because and I love the batteries. I own the batteries, I love the batteries, and you can't find batteries like that for the same price, even on like something like an Amazon. You know what I mean? If you look at ambitions, if, if you're saying that if it shits the bed on day one, but you look at ambitions. You know, policy, yeah. you have got, from getting it, you have got 15, 15 days mm. free return where they'll pay for the return shipping. Well, there you go. You even have the that the added, added thing as well. And if something goes wrong, uh, we do know that their their customer service is pretty legit. I mean, it might take a little while because of shipping yeah. and everything, but they're on point. I really appreciate that. Um what, somebody else had said something in here. I was trying to get to. Let's see. And we did just talk about it, but they're here again. So I figured, well, somebody asked, "What's some good budget-friendly cards?" We talk about these a lot oh, now. Well. That me and Andy are both on the same page with these. But um, again, there we're gonna say the uh, Mast Pro cartridges, specifically the Mast Pro cartridges. They're just good bang for the buck. I mean, it's hard to get away from them. I like using them. They're sharp, reasonably priced, extremely reasonably priced, considering. Um, Eight. Has anybody used the carts? Have you ever used the carts from Ambition? I've never used them. No, I am. Okay. I don't use them. I'm just going to let you check. I'll be back in a minute now. Sure, man. Um, let's see. Bishop has one of the best customer service in the industry. I believe that. Luckily, I've never actually needed to use Bishop's customer service. Uh, I use Bishop machines. I like them. Um, I've been using them for years now, a couple years. And I've never had to call them for anything. So I've never had to use their customer service. And the fact that they are in the United States and I, too, am in the United States, it would make it a bit nicer if I needed to use them because they're for shipping and, and this, that, and the other would just be that much easier and quicker because it doesn't have to go overseas somewhere to a foreign country in my situation because I am in the States. Uh, but, yeah, it's good to know. And uh, let's see, Rough Estate and Mass Pro is great. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm personally not the biggest fan of their machines. Um, I've used their, I can't remember which one, it was like their their first sort of wireless mass pro machine. It was it was extremely weak in my opinion. Um, I didn't see it as really being something I'd really want to promote or be, be get behind. But when it came to their needles, I lagged behind a little bit trying them out, but extremely grateful that I did try them out because I'm a big fan of them. And again, like for the money, you know, if you're, if you're not tattooing every day, um, then maybe, you know what, maybe, maybe it's not. But, um, and you got to make those decisions on how much you want to spend for your needles. How many needles are you going to use? When to maybe have some super high end needles that you're like, all right, I'm doing this portrait. I'm busting out my favorites, right? Uh, that's where I stand. I, um, Amela Elliott is kind of really like my favorite needle grouping. And when I'm doing stuff that I'm really want some smooth, not to say that the mass pros can't, it's just, I don't know. It's just this thing where I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to go with these ones for this. I, I don't know what dictates that. It's probably shenanigans, but it's just it's just what goes on in my brain. Um, <clears throat> what else we got here? Uh, sorry about my uh, uh, voice here, guys. Got sick a couple days ago and uh, really messed me up. 
All right. So this person, Antonio Terrell says, I like the mass flash machine to line with, and I like the mass fold for shading. That's fair. I mean, because I have two machines I use for lining and shading. I use the Packer for lining and the, and the uh, wand shader for shading. But truth be told, I've been testing out. Uh, I've tested out a lot of machines, and nothing has made me think, oh, maybe I should change from the uh, Bishop lineup to something different. But um, I've ran into something, and it goes against everything I believe in when it comes to things. So I'm, I'm struggling heavily with it personally. But um, it's a swashplate-driven machine, and it's an adjustable stroke machine, which are things I didn't really care for because they were just I just didn't really like them all that much. But uh, this particular machine, I'm really enjoying it. I'm liking it for shading. I'm liking it for color packing. And I really haven't used it for a lot of large lining. I've done five-round liners and whatnot, but I haven't really pushed any nine-round shaders, any five-round shaders with the machine. It goes up to 4.2 millimeters of stroke. Again, I haven't tried it yet, so at large neo groupings with that. But I think it's fine to have a couple of machines, have a machine you like to line with and a machine you like shade with. Plus, for me, it's less time. I don't have to, like, I know it sounds really lazy, but to unload a liner, load a mag, shade, 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 work my way up, work my way up. Uh, maybe I want to do a little lining, unplug, plug in. Two machines, one lining, so I can do a little lining, turn it off, grab that, jump back over, do a little lining. So I mean, using a two-machine setup is totally cool. I, I think that's fine. Or, I mean, again, a one-machine setup is, is totally fine as well. At least back in the day, you know, I say back in the day, it wasn't even that long ago. Whereas if you wanted to have five needles out, you had to have five machines loaded, individual tubes, individual bar needles. And uh, so we have it much better nowadays to just be able to grab a cartridge, swap it out, and then to have maybe two machines that we can swap needles out with. It's just pretty – and, and we're wireless. It's like we're living in a really good time to be tattooing. The downside, I think, to the time we're living in tattooing, which would be that you just have more competition now because there's so many more people with the ability to tattoo. But I think that's what makes it fun. And if we look at it more from a sharing perspective, unless as a dog eat dog, which there's enough people who already are look at it like that, you'll enjoy it that much more. Yeah. Tattooing is stupid money. Mike, I don't know what that means. No. Um, are we making stupid money? Because I don't think so. I definitely I think, think I could be now. Definitely <laughs> think I could be making more money working on avionics, electronics, working on aircraft, electronics. Definitely would be paying more money, uh, but it's way more fun. Yeah, and I I'm sure that there, there's probably people that do make stupid money. I'm just not one of them. I could, I could probably make more when I've been back on construction. Um, <laughs> it's with a lot less outlet. Mm. Mm. if you understand what I mean um, yeah it, it, it's quite simple I'm not having to run a studio for a start, I pay all its insurances and all its waste fees and this that and other, so that's one massive factor that goes out yeah. of it um, and that keeping local health authority happy and this that and other it's, it's just something you don't have to do it should. but like you say, it's so so much fun and it's laid back and chilled out atmosphere when you're tattooing. That that's what I really like about it. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I agree, man. And again, like you said, you could making more money is it's very possible just in any any business, and and maybe you you do eventually, you know. Um, but the other thing too is <clears throat> the nice thing about maybe let's say a typical nine to five job would be that you have like set days off, and I'm sure I. <clears throat> I don't have days off because on my days off, I'm working on designing tattoos because I need those days to make sure I have the next week of tattoos ready to go. You know, if not, I'm always the brain never stops turning, thinking about making sure I'm ready for the next week or tomorrow or the next three days, or the next four days, or, you know, getting prepped for projects that are out. It's just like, there's never, if you have free time, but it's not really free time to schedule everything nowadays, which never did. If I was off work, I was off work and I was doing what I needed to do or what I wanted to do. Or now it just feels like if I'm not tattooing, we're preparing for tattoos and it's just constant. Um, but sorry. anyhow, so I'm, there is definitely money to be made and some people are probably making stupid money. 
Yeah. Um, um, what's that, Donnie? Can you give me a link to a machine and batteries you use? Well, I've got a uh, link to a battery machine that I'm using at I minutes mean, over on. I've got one on my channel on video that I've just put out to, you know, ambition that I'm using with the batteries and everything that's over there. Is that one? Mike's put, I know it's a lot of money to try and find what works for you. Well, this is what we're trying to do. Yeah, he's put it on there. But this is what we're trying to help you with here um, and try and cut down a little bit of that by giving you an insight that what works for us day in and day out as an everyday tattoo artist that tattoos virtually every day uh, and does a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, and this is what, because we've been through it all and amounts of machines, amounts of cartridges, needles, and everything. So we've just managed to hone down what we need and the supplies that we use. So all we can do from there is, is pass that along up, pass that along to you guys. And uh, like we say, if you if you want to try them, try them. But it's just what works for us. And hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, it would actually be cost effective and work for yourselves. Just try stop you going through six, seven, eight, nine different types of cartridges, eight, eight or nine different types of machines, power supplies and batteries. Just try honing to an area where that you can start and it's going to get you a good base start, basically. Yeah, that's, I mean, because it can be expensive. But, I mean, the thing is, is I think anything you get into um, yeah, you can do. get expensive pretty quickly, you know. So, no doubt, it can definitely get expensive. Amber brings up a good point. Like we were talking before, it is the golden age in tattooing right now. You know, the information is out there. Um, it's in full force, which wasn't a thing not that long ago. Uh, I think it's a good thing, personally. But that's that comment in and of itself is extremely subjective. But uh, yeah, I think it's great. We think we should enjoy it, capitalize on it, you know, learn. Uh, the worst thing I think we can do is to get stuck in our ways. And I'm always trying to make sure I don't do that. And to listen to other people, learn from other people, and practice doing new things, even if they, even if it's just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, because. Those things are going to add overall. Um, thank you. Amazon legit to order from? Hmm. Yeah, it is. Depends on what you're getting, though. I wouldn't buy ink from Amazon. Just straight up. Wouldn't buy ink. Um, what else would I buy from Amazon? That's probably the biggest thing. I mean, it, the rest, again, more subjectivity here. But, I mean, if you want to get your gloves and all kinds of stuff from there, Absolutely. You want to buy a machine from Amazon? Knock yourself out. They're just machines. Uh, if you want to buy your needles from Amazon, knock yourself out. I mean, you know, I'm not saying everything's great or not great. It's just it's there. It's available. If that's what you want to do, you do have to watch out for fraud, um, people faking certain things. And again, that's why I wouldn't order my inks from Amazon. It's going in another person's skin. Be wise about it. Any comments on that one, Andy? Are you good? No, I mean, I bought stuff from Amazon. I still buy stuff from Amazon. I do all the time. Um, Just not ink. inks. Inks and stuff like that. A reputable, uh, 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 reputable supplier. Um, I get them from my needles. I ship straight from basically manufacturer. Um, what else have I got? Boom, 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 boom. My gloves, I don't buy off Amazon because they're expensive. Um, I buy straight from a medical supplies place, and they're super cheap that way. But I buy, I buy full cartons of them at a time. You know, or ten boxes yeah. a week. So I buy full Spar cartons of them at a the time to get a massive reduction. Uh, and that, so yeah. But I don't buy bits and bats. I still don't buy bits and bats. Uh, from Amazon, I'll be honest, I do like shopping on Amazon. <laughs> it's nice because the, the shipping is quick. Um, your information is all saved there. I order, I do order a lot of stuff from Amazon. But nowadays, it's mo a lot of consumables. 
Uh, I get back teen. I'll order from Amazon. I'll order some dental bibs. Sometimes if I'm not proactive enough, I'll order gloves in a pinch. Um, razor blades. I can order those. Buy them by the box. Um, I'm sure there's other places you can get these too, but those are easy places to get them when you need them. Uh, what ink do you guys like to use? What do you got, Andy? I've got right black, pretty much standard. Is dynamic. Mm. My white is standard dynamic. Um, my colours, to be fair, over the, over time. Those used intense colours, they progressively get harder to get. But through time with certain colours, I found that some world famous colours are better, but I do like world famous ink. Um, I've got some radiant in particular colours. Um, what's the other one? Is it fusion? No, not got no fusion. Yeah, fusion. I think it's fusion. I am just about to order a load more colours, but. I was going to either try industry inks or raw pigment, raw inks, but I think I'm actually going to go with um, Radiant. I'll okay. change my mind. I'm going to go with Radiant. I've tried them before. Yeah. Um, I can get I can get plenty of colours out of it. You know, and I, I know I know the inks, so I am going to. This next lot will be Radiant that I order. Nice. Yeah, I, I'm with you as far as black goes. I use dynamic black, mainly just standard black. I don't really use triple black. White, I use uh, star bright for my white, mainly when using white. And then when it comes to like mixing to make true grays and stuff like that, um, I use the fusion. I was put on to use that. And I've actually been enjoying using the fusion white for mixing with to make grays. When it comes to color, I was really stuck with Eternal for a long time. But as I've been running out of certain colors, I've just been going online and finding other colors that I like and not really worry too much about brand to a degree. So I've got <clears throat> some more fusion, some intense, some star bright colors, some solid colors. Um, and I know there's a few more brands actually over there. And uh, just been trying to test them out as I go. And I've not had any issues with any of them. Some are a little thinner than others. But sometimes it's a little bit nicer. So again, I don't have all the answers there. I've used, I would just make sure it's of a, of a brand, you know, you know, if you've never heard of it, don't use it. It's just better. Not, I mean, ink is not like free or anything. It's not super cheap, but it's also not crazy, crazy expensive. Obviously you're trying to buy 30 colors. It's going to get expensive fast, but, um, you know, buy one ounce bottles. Again, I was an idiot and I bought like four ounce bottles when I first big four ounce kit. Oh my God. So much of it went to, went went to the trash because it expired way before I could ever use it. Cause I wasn't tattooing it. Yeah. But, um, anyhow, uh, let's see. Amber says 43% of the population of America has at least one tattoo. I'm not surprised, but maybe it should be 43% of the population have at least one tattoo. Yeah. Dang. If we can get 43% of the population to have two tattoos, they'd be in the money. But um, our tattoos becoming not cool anymore. I saw an article somewhere a few months back where it was like the new, like, I don't know what the new generation, I don't know, is that Gen Z or is that uh, Gen Z's kids? I don't know. But at some point, somebody, or is it millennials? I don't know. Somebody was talking about how the fear is that tattoos will no longer be like a cool thing. I don't know how cool thing, whatever. And that um, we'll see that start to slow down. I haven't seen that. I'm just curious if anybody had, no, no. you know. I've seen that. If all, that. If all, I would say there's been an uptake. Uh, yeah, I would agree. Yeah. I would say there's an uptake because it's, I, I just don't know what it is. There's a certain type of person, and I think there will always be a certain type of person that is attracted to tattoos. Even the the art tattoos, they don't see them as tattoos, they see them as body art. Yeah, and I think that's how it's progressed. Even though it's still classed as a tattoo, it's more seen as body art than just a tattoo. And I, I think that's what's keeping it. Oh, uh, the keeping body it art. Yeah, is that, art. That's a good point. Just the lingo of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, 
I'm just moving down the line here. Yeah, we've got. Do you guys have any actual questions? Do you got any questions popping up, Andy? I can I can certainly pull yeah, them up. Yeah, we've underground John from Dubai has, has made it in. It's 3 a.m. over there. He's finished with his client. He's, uh, he's managed to uh, come and visit for a while. Yeah. John? So, is he? Uh, oh, is he? Uh, he's asking, how about thick lines? What do you think the best type of needles? Thick lines and super thick lines. Mm. I'm going to agree with you there, Dave. It, the easiest way to put a super thick line in or a thick line is using a round shader. That yeah. Is the that is the easiest way of doing it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, definitely. And then at that point, you just kind of have to know what thick line you're trying to get and what brand you're using. Again, like we talked about before, yeah. Andy, depending on – you might be a size 12, but maybe you're a size 12 in Nike, and then you go to New Balance. New Balance is a bit larger now, and you're like, shoot, maybe I'm 11 and a half. So the sizes do slightly vary depending on brand. Maybe not all that much, but you do notice it sometimes. So, again, maybe like a nine-round shader would be a pretty decent thick line all the way up to a 14-round shader, which is going to be a pretty solid line, a pretty good hefty line in my opinion. So those are two pretty good thicknesses. And if you look for an in-between, again, there's a, they're just like round liners, just thicker really. Um, but, yeah. Let's see. So, that's it. I mean, you guys, you guys outside here and in chat, you must got must have some sort of uh, questions or something that you want to ask. Whether it's tattoo, like we say, machines, needles, inks, tattooing in the shop, whatever, this, that, and other. Um, yeah, because if not, Andy's going to tell. Andy's going to tell a story. I've, I've got a yeah. I've, I've, got, hey, Andy, it might be an early night. We get out of here, you know. It might be an early night. I mean, yeah. I mean, like it. I would love at the end of the day. I mean, it'd be interesting to see. It'd be interesting to see reaction down right on side here, actually. Yeah. Um, going through this. So, anyway, and see how these guys have dealt with it. So on Friday, <laughs> late Friday afternoon. I'm gonna use the restroom as you start. I did hear the story. Yeah. But so, so late Friday afternoon, we had a young couple come into the studio for a septum piercing. Now, um, the young couple, the girl must have been 19, boyfriend must have been somewhere between, I would say, probably 20, 23. Um, didn't speak a great deal of English, but enough. They come with all the relevant paperwork, blah, 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 blah this, that, and other. So, yeah. Filled the, paper, filled the paperwork out, filled all those consent forms out, everything, no problem. With that, um, my daughter texts them to get the text the, the young lady to get a septum pierced. So she sized the septum up. She says, you need this size of jewellery. At which point, the young girl goes, no, I want bigger jewellery. My daughter went, no, this is the size of jewellery that you need. She went, no, I want bigger jewellery. She says, but if I put bigger jewellery in, it's not going to look right. Um, this is the size jewellery. No, I want bigger jewellery. So after she told her, told her it wasn't going to look right, she still insisted. She begrudgingly pierced her with the larger size um, ring. Uh, not ring. Bah, through the septum. Once she was done, pierced it, no problem. This time was done. Once she was done, the lady, the young girl that was in, the chair getting pierced, immediately got up, come round to where I was sat, round in the um, uh, reception area, I proceeded to go, look, look what you let her do. She made me look like a pig. It's not right, it's too big, I look like a pig. This uh, and other, carrying on. So I was a look at it, I said to her, well, I'm ever so sorry, um, you've asked for it, but yeah, I look like a pig. Um, I said, well, I can take it out. Yeah, you take it out. You take it out. I said, well, she'll take it out. She said, no, you take it out. Um, so, text through, text it out. This, that, and other. No problem. I says, right. No problem. Taking it out. There you go. Job done. I'm not going to charge you for it. Off you go. No, I want you to pierce it again. And I can't pierce it again. You've just been done. This, blah, 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 this, that, and other. At this point, my friend's chirping in, and just behind us in the piercing room, we have a little stuffed toy. It's a monkey. 
for the young ones, you know, like six or seven year olds, you know, that come in that want the ears piercing. We take that, we want this, we want that, we want other. You, you fuck nose up, you've done this, you've done that. I went, no, you're not having it, you're not having it. And they wouldn't leave the shop. They wouldn't leave the shop. They were carrying on, they were running around, they were trying to get this monkey and everything to the point I managed to get them out of the piercing room and the laser room and round the front up until the point that they were carrying on, they were effing and blinding it, or I was trying to be nice, but there's only so far you can go before I literally blew up. I literally blew up in the middle of the shop. I mean, there's only me in, there's only daughter in. Daughter's 23, she's never seen all like that. She was terrified. And I'm like, fuck you, you're getting it now. And I literally blew up. And uh, I was carrying on with her. Boyfriend's going, no, don't you shout at my, don't you shout at my girlfriend. So I went, right, yeah, I'll shout at you. So needs to say, and, but he's like, and he's laughing and they're babbling in whatever language. And he's going, and he's laughing at her and he's going, ah, that's two now, that's two now. And he's uh, got his phone out and he's recording me. So I went to grab his phone and everything. But yeah, we basically got, I ended up getting them out, getting the door open, this, that, and other. Got, um, Girl and got girl out. Boyfriend was inside. I'm I'm stood in between them. I'm looking one way, make sure what she's doing. Other eyes looking other way. This that and other. Um, yeah, stressful. But it's just some of that happens. Eventually got them out after about. I'll be honest, probably after about 35, 40 minutes. Whoa, that yeah, long? 35, 40 minutes, and that absolutely insane. Um, to the point that, I mean. I'm supposedly under doctor's orders not to get in them sort of situations anymore and <laughs> under that stress load and everything um, to the point that Friday night and all day Saturday I went up with it because the amount of energy I'd expended in a short amount of time, it just, you know, took me out. But I said to my wife when I come back, she missed it all. I went, do you know it's possible like that? I went, if I'm going out, if I'm going to have another heart attack and I'm, my likes are going out, I'm doing it on my terms. I'm going out in a blaze of glory. You gotta save that monkey. Yeah, I gotta save Take that monkey. You know what I mean? That's it. <laughs> I'd have gone out in a, I'd have gone out in a blaze of glory. Well, just like, like I extended, like having an anger grenade. I went all right. Then the pulp pin. Then they let spoon off and cooked it for a while. Then just after a while, that was it. No, no go. That exploded. Um, but that's just. Were they on drugs? No. The uh, I let. Uh, they literally, with the rest of the context, and if you saw the CCTV video, because every time I went back to one of them, they were dancing about and making fun, you know, behind my back, um, and the other one, and I got, and then split up like either side like that, so I'd have to look at one to look at other to make sure what was going on. Um, but no, and the conversation and what you could make out that they were saying, they... They're doing things, doing things like this on a regular basis. So do you think that, and the way it sounds, is they went into this, what they were just going to F around off. and see what yeah. happened? Yeah, they were just going to scam you. They were just going to do it from off, scam you from off. You think that they were going to, what, try to get a, a piercing, pay nothing for it, and leave kind of a thing? Yeah, and get what they can out of you. Try and get something out of you as compensation. What? Uh, only thing they got out of me is compensation. We'd open the door and thrown out at shop. Right? Dang. And that's Are after you the calling authorities. Well, yeah, but unfortunately, authorities over here are not worth a carrot. Oh, so they ain't uh, over here, but because yeah, no, I can imagine. Your phone and they'll turn up. Your phone and they turn up three hours later. Oh, it'll be my. died down anyway. And oh. like I say, if. Worse come to it worse than I'd have read one of them, then it'd have been they'd have been okay, and I'd have got it'd have been me that ended up in handcuffs. Yeah, yeah, that's the way it works. Yeah, right. so even though they're in my shop carrying on, they won't leave, demanding this, demanding that, demanding other. Um, yeah, it would definitely be you going down. It's just, but yeah, it uh, um, not a nice situation to be put in, but no, obviously, man. there is. And it's always seems to be something that you read about and or stuff like this, and you never think is going to happen. 
Yeah. So at the end of the day, they're in, they're done. You've used needles, you've you've used jewelry, you've done this, you've wasted time. Yeah. They've pissed you about. You're out of pocket financially, and that and had a lot of aggro to boot because they think it'd be funny to come in and do something like that and try sneak video sneaking video reaction of what yeah. you do. Um, but obviously he didn't like it when I went for his phone. No, no, I oh, imagine yeah, not. I went for his phone. Went, no, you're not doing that in here. That's when they're like, oh, I have rights. Like, yeah, okay. You do, or whatever they get all uh, dramatic at that point. Now you're the yeah. now they're the victim. Gotta gotta be a victim. Always a victim. That's yeah. the way you win these wars. Be a victim, which is pathetic. Well, it is, but yeah, it's like, yeah that's just sad that they come to your shop, monk, mess around. But here's the weird. It sounds like there's not really a whole lot of ways to see this and foresee it and stop it in the future. You know, it doesn't sound like it would. Do, looking back on it, is there anything you can glean from it to say, you know what? Yeah, I'm not gonna let that happen again because of this. Why this or that? Yeah, it's uh, it, it's like I say, it's it's an awful situation we put in, um, and you, you, it made me. It went up after the fact. Looking at it, um, it should have put my radar up and alert when I seen the address that they'd put on the consent forms was basically the other side of the city and uh, they'd come through to this side. Uh, okay. And I know for a fact that they must have passed, they've got to have passed 20 or 30 different piercing places. Yeah. You know, yeah. They was monkeying around. Yeah. Because where they, the address that they was on, literally within half a mile that have been in Leeds city centre where there's 20 or 30 different piercing shops. I see. But the problem is then is there's a lot more, shall we say, authority kicking about instead of being right. out of city centre in a suburb type thing. So they, they, they in some regards, chose you. Yeah. Could have. Um, I do want to answer this and then I want to read. I want to throw Argulators comment up because that was pretty good. But Raphael... Uh, does ask Dave, haven't haven't you been I haven't been on in a while? Did you make it the move yet? And how's that going for you? I haven't moved to Texas yet. Um, we're going to be moving in towards the end of July, maybe the first week in August. So just a few more months, and we'll be out there. Um, and that's going well. We got some stuff packed up. We're going to be heading out to Texas probably in July, early July, to lock on a house to rent or something along those lines, and then we'll be heading back out there permanently that end of that month or very beginning of August. That's the plan, and we've been sticking to it so far. Um, so, again, hopefully I will be a bit stable in August as far as ability to start working out there would be you could kind of roughly plan for August. Um, so that would be that. Um, but I do want to throw Aria Later's comment up here. Had my beauty shop for eight years here in the U.K., and gosh, some people. One client got so mad that she uh, – it's so mad that the sad of her shade. nails, the shade, thank you, of her nails yeah. was not ideal. That she actually shit beside the toilet. Like the nerve of people. Like who, mm. where do these people exist? Like, could you imagine just being like, you know what? I'm done with these people. I hate my nails so much. That I'm just going to just drop a hot one right here yeah. next to the toilet. So you can pick up after it. I mean, it's like she says further on. It says she's put good. You have cameras. That's a must, but it must have been awful. Now, <laughs> and my daughter will vouch for this, and uh, all the way through, and the thing. I have, I've had, due to the jobs that I've had, I've never put up with any shit, um, and I'm awful, awful. Um, shall I say, temperament and manner for people that are stupid, you know, yeah. and trying to take the piss. Um, I've got no time for them, and I've always been extremely volatile with them. Right. Now, to the point I felt sorry for my daughter, she's never been put in that situation before, and it was not nice, and it shook her up. 
where is with me? Yes, I blew up. I went off on one um, to the point I could have easily gone to the point I could have easily probably gone one step further and probably braid them, but hey oh. Um, but once it were over and done with, I just thought, what a set of dicks. And I actually thought it were quite funny, highly entertaining. You know what I mean? But, what is often done, yeah. But for other people, it's not. And I can shrug stuff off. I can shrug stuff off like that, no problem. But some people can't. It does leave an impression. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's the thing that you've got to be careful of. Um unfortunately I'm, I'm not made like that but some people are it does leave a lasting impression true yeah you're, you're right everyone's a little different some things can be a bit more shall we say traumatic than yeah. than others um no doubt about it no doubt about it but um well guys if you have any last minute questions guys it's we've only been here an hour and a half there's nothing wrong with that we had a nice long stream on andy's uh channel the other night and usually our Sundays go for a long time. So it's kind of pre-planned to be a short-ish conversation. Needles are not exactly the most in-depth thing for a live stream, right? Especially when it's just a couple of guys communicating. So I hope that there was some information shared. Or maybe you just got to hear other people's opinions on needles and what have you. But yeah. uh, What's up, Andy? I'm just laughing at smoke. People are really off their rockers today. They are. You're right, smoke. They are, man. I just... I don't get. I just don't get it. I just don't get it, Smokey. You're right. I just some people are just seem to be wired backwards. Um, mm -hmm. I know. It's. Uh, have either of you all used the dynamic colours yet, Raphael? I haven't, mate. No, the blacks and the whites I have, and I don't have a problem with. I want to say. I haven't used the colours. Um, like I said, just while there's picking that lot up, if. You haven't seen it. I have done the review on the Ambition Talks, which is on my channel with the link to where I bought it from, if anybody's interested. Um, I think I am going to put one out, put a smaller video out, you know, and a cut. I'm going to take your advice, Dave, and uh, next week and cut down and shorten up and do a concise little video of, you know, laser leg removal. Not laser removal at leg. Yeah. Oh. And that, Definitely, we edit that down into a short, short little eight minute, 10 minute package. Definitely. I would do that. That way, you know, um, these long form content isn't bad, but it's mainly for us just hanging out with our, I would call it our friends here. Yeah. But when you can do, put a video together, something compact, 10 minutes, people, more people are willing to jump in and, and give that a look, see, yeah. and uh, whatnot. But this is the first dynamic color I've ever bought um i actually haven't even tried it yet it's hot pink i was just looking for and i wanted some new pinks went online whatever pinks i thought looked good via the interwebs i ordered a few so definitely trying out many different brands well I'll let you know when i try this but this is the only dynamic aside from their black i've used it has a nice sounding consistency a bit on the not like liquidy side but i find eternal inks to be a little thick you know what i mean they're just a little thick and um can make a little tricky to go into the skin so you end up having to add like a little bit of like a witch hazel or distilled water a few drops to help water it down but this has a good pretty decent consistency we'll test it out as we move forward chris and Shai, what about mum's ink <clears throat> um i've only tried their uh mm. um, what is it uvs i've only tried mom's uh. uv ink and the very watery so if yeah. it's anything like the UVs, it's very watery. Um, but like I say, it's that's the only colours I've used out of the mums range is their UV line. Um, yeah. In, in dynamic, it does sound on the thinner side, which so is Fusion. I keep getting these brands. Yeah, Fusion is too, but I don't mind it exactly. This thin doesn't always mean unsaturated. I don't know, but it... it, it the thinner inks aren't actually all that bad. So at first, I really did think they were, but after using them, they're not bothering so, me as much. I'll tell you what I have done, Dave. I forgot to yeah. tell you. I'll tell you what I have done. I have tried the Mom's Nuclear UV ink. It's oh, yeah? It's garbage. It's garbage. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't hang around in the skin. You know, the uh, the invisible. Yeah, yeah, I'm 
I'm trying to see what I hear. Oh, this was Bloodline. Bloodline. Yeah. I don't like I don't like the UB Inks period. I'm not a fan. Of yeah. Them. It's it it's garbage. It doesn't hang around. It's bright, but it doesn't hang around. Now, right. <clears throat> what I have done, and I'm just waiting for the client and the feedback off the client. I have 50 50 the invisible UV ink with dynamic white pigment. So I've mixed 50%, you know, UV. Yeah. With 50% white. white, which gives it the consistency. And when I lit it up, it lit up bright. And we put it in and it lit up thing just to see whether it hangs about. The white stayed. But just see whether the UV pigment stays within the white. And they were aware of this, I imagine. Yes, it was his idea. Okay, well that's and cool. Would, then. So you got was, the white. It was, it was his idea, and I said, "Well, it's fine as long as when I mix the two colors together, they don't do anything weird in the pot." Yeah, you're gonna yeah. be fine. Yeah, UV ink, in my opinion, is a mess for the most part. Like, if you're trying to do full color and everything, you got to have UV light out. And yeah. I just wasn't a fan of it. I have it in my leg. I should probably, I have a whole video set up for it. I just never put out because I didn't really want to encourage the use of it just by explaining it. But on a side note, Are You Later does ask to use different blacks for lining and for shading slash packing. Personally, I don't. No. Nope. I use dynamic black for all of it. Uh, if you want to use like a triple black, for your black black, you're more than welcome to. I don't do that either, but you could. I mean, that makes sense. And again, I, I tested the black and the triple black out. There's not really much of a difference there. I would say a long-term healing wise, it seems like the triple black might be a little bit more of a richer black over the course of time. Uh, but that's all I've really found from it. Um, uh, Raphael, any thoughts on the S8 brother printer? Um, I'm assuming that's the um, thermal is the SA, is it the thermal wireless printer from Brother? Um, dedicated to thermal wireless printer. Um, if it is, I've never used one. Because like I said, I use inkjet. You use like a thermal copier, don't you, Dev? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I use an inkjet printer. I've never used one. I have used a cheaper version of it. I have used a cheaper version of um, one of them printers and a couple of things that i did find is i needed a good program to run it off my computer or my tablet that could do a you know i could change really change the contrast and intensity of the black lines you know to super black the other thing is i had to make sure i used a decent a good you know uh, i actually was a good uh, thermal like paper. yeah yeah Thermal yeah. paper, the cheaper thermal papers didn't seem to work. Um, in it. So that's about as much as I know. There's no, to me, I do prefer the inkjet stencil printer just straight over to one of them printers. But I, but then again, if you're doing a lot of moving about, you know, shop to shop or client to, or client, to client or you're going to a convention, you don't really want to be lugging a yeah. uh, big eco tank printer along with you either true that's true so it is nice to have that versatility when needed i have i have really wanted to buy i, I can't remember the brand anymore because i haven't looked at it in a while but it's legit like thermo printer where you take the stencil the image put it underneath the paper slide it in put it in the plastic seal run it through and it, oh man, it just spits it's way quicker it's like these ones only way smoother you don't have to worry about crinkles it's nice they're about a thousand dollars and uh, I was going to order one, I think, last year. But yeah. as it got closer, and I'm looking at renting a booth in somebody's shop, um, the truth of the matter is I already have way too much stuff as it is, which I'm probably <laughs> not going to take with me into another shop. So the thought of buying more equipment for a shop that already has all the same equipment, I'm going to be utilizing some of their stuff, so I haven't. But um, definitely a good investment if, that's, if you like that thermostyle printing. Uh, can you use, no, no, it's proper. Can you use any printer for stencil inks? I'm not right sure what you mean. No, there. If you're using no, you a, yeah, what I would say is, and if you're using an inkjet <coughs> printer to put it in, what I would say is, I slipped up. I got the 
and I don't, in fact, actually, I don't think they did it then, but I got the Epsom Eco Tank ET2600, and it has four little tanks, you're black and your three colours. Now, obviously, you've got to put a bit of your expensive stencil ink in each one of them, otherwise it doesn't work, because it'll just say, you know, you're out of ink. Yeah. Whereas then Epsom and them brought out the Eco Tank Mono, just black and white, one tank. <coughs> yeah, for that um, purpose, right? For that purpose, and I wish that had been about because I'd have just straight up, I'd have just straight up bought that one. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, let's see, I understand what Argula is saying. Said, I've heard that some bl black inks spread a bit more because of the size of the particles in it, so they better. They're better for blackout, et cetera, but rubbish for lining as they don't stay crispy enough, hence the question. Right. And I remember when I started tattooing, too, it was like this big thing. Well, I don't know if it was a big thing, but it was just a thing. Um, there was liner ink. There was liner, liner ink. Like, we, they would, at the place I was apprenticing at, they would always get this lining ink. That's what they all used, liner ink, uh, liner black. And then I don't remember what they used for the regular black. So I did, at the, uh, for one, for like the first year, was buying a specific liner black. I think it was like uh gorilla bat gorilla what is it something gorilla boy it's been a long time silverback silverback <laughs> gorilla silver black black liner or whatever but no i didn't really over time and it was for that reason i'd heard something like that and that's what they had told me but i just didn't really notice any of a difference i didn't really care for the lying black and then what they had for shading black i just thought it was too too weird so i just ended up finding my way to dynamic black and just use it for everything but you're you're not wrong in what you had heard and whatnot and you're probably not wrong in in the in the, the math or the idea behind it all i just haven't noticed enough of a difference say i'm moving away from this or that yeah i mean Raphael says epsom is the one that i have but i have a lot of trouble linking to my ipad now right i don't know is it apple store or whatever it is um i know i've got android but uh, I've got Android, but I have a little app. I have an app that you go on store and get, and it's Epsom iPrint. Not that you can see it, it's just down there. Epsom iPrint, it's called. Oh, I see um, it there. Got it off Android Store. I'm assuming it'll be on Apple Store. It's called Epsom iPrint. Connects, connects nice and easy, you know, to it. Just follow instructions um, and everything connects really well to it. Just put your just put your printer, if you just put your printer on your Wi-Fi, you know, to your router, connect it up to your router that way. And then when you go on and it's on your phone or your iPad, it will search your Wi-Fi network via your router, find your printer, you just pick it out. That's the one that I want to use. Boof, off you go. Super easy. Oh. Super easy. Um. Uh, okay, well, if there's any more questions, guys, get them in now because we're going to be closing it up at the two-hour mark. Um, if there's not stuff going on, really no point me and Andy just chilling here. We, we uh, get this, a lot of the same information out, and I love answering questions or whatnot, but... Uh, let us know if you got anything. We can shoot some sort of ideas or two cents back at you. But if not, we're gonna be happy. we're gonna jump off here. Call it a bit of an early or night, and uh, sometimes that's nice. But uh, it's not necessary if we don't have to. No, I don't. Um, people have got a few bits and bats that they want to know, and this, that, and other. Um. Um. Yep. All good here. No more questions from Smoke. Fair enough, my good friend. Thank you for being here every... Smoke, you're always here, man. We just really appreciate it. He's always here. That's, I think you must be filling up on knowledge now, Most Smoke, because I, you remember originally, it was loads and loads of questions and everything going on um, did Smoke, you know, in, in chat. And I, I think he must be just absorbing all this information now. <laughs> hey, he's been stepping it up a notch. I've been seeing a lot more practicing coming out of him. Yeah. Getting better, man um heck yeah yeah somebody was asking about a stencil solution has anyone uh jason was asking uh has anyone tried the clear cut stencil, stencil yet? Yeah. i don't know what the clear cut stencil you ever it's, heard uh, um, basically it's like clear film 
and your stencil goes on one side of it so that you can see everything as you're putting it down you can it's just like on the other side for, for want of a better word Dave it's a little bit thicker it's a little bit thicker than um well it's a lot thicker actually thinking about it than your um you know your second skin you know you know the second skin that you put on um you but what it is is you can it's actually clear like a clear plastic film and your stencil that, you can like see the skin and the stencil at the same time yes. you put it off you can tell yes. exactly there's no paper in the way i know interesting interesting and it's a little bit thicker it, it's, it's, probably, it's a little bit thicker than the, the second skin type stuff you know that mm. you put on uh, so it'd be kind of hard to like curl around like a, a rounded spot good for like flat areas where it doesn't have to like no no because when i say it goes on the, the seat it seems to be a bit elastic -y as well that it does curve you know and go around I'm, okay i've interesting it is i mean I, I was watching a video on it the other day somebody putting it on it looked neat but it also do you know it just you know when somebody you think she's sent gimmick yeah yeah and it very well could be or it could be the next greatest thing you know but yeah um if anybody in the channel wants to go try it and let us know That'd be great. Return the love. Try something out. Let us know. I mean, don't Kristen, do it you. Chris and Shai, knowing you guys do this on a Sunday, I will be here more often. We do this on a Sunday, Chris, and then over on my channel on a... Well, it's been on a Thursday lately. By the Wednesday or Thursday when notification goes up, if we've usually got some critique, uh, subscribers have sent the work in, you know, that they've done for critique, and we'll take a look at it. And go through it and point out where you may need to be working on or anything like that we do that over there on either a wednesday or a thursday so it's uh yeah the emails that that your youtube channel i just put at the bottom of the screen again chris if you want and you want your work to be checked out on it'll be on andy's channel this wednesday or thursday um if that interests you you can go to the underscore tattoo underscore studio subscribe to andy's channel Turn notifications so you're aware whether it's a Wednesday or Thursday. We usually go depending on our, our uh, uh, availability. Yeah, and, schedule. Um, yeah, and then we'll be able to take a look at your work. You can send it any time. Uh, submit your work to critiquemytattoo at gmail.com, and Andy will see those when we go live. We'll open that email up, and he'll go through them with you guys, and we'll discuss them. So yeah. if you're interested in that, make sure you go over there, check Andy's channel out. Definitely subscribe. And if you got work you want to have checked out, send it. We look at variety. I mean, don't be alarmed if it's the gr super great. Sometimes it's amazing, and sometimes it's you know not amazing. But that's okay. Uh, we try to be respectful, and um, su respectful is subjective in this world because yeah. obviously we have to say something about your tattoo, good or bad. And so it's good to have tough skin and understand that it is what it is. And if you take what the couple of us idiots have to say, it might help you out in the long run. It might not. What do we know? Uh, Aguilar says, roughly what time Wednesday and Thursday? I know it's roughly around about, well, we've gone somewhere between 8 and 9 p.m. GMT because I can't, my head's not functioning at the minute. I can't quite work out because we've gone back to original time difference. Well, so, I would be... I'd be good on Thursday, and Wednesday's a long, long day. Thursday's that's about cool. a half or cool. So that's Thursday, and then it's just uh, whatever time that you're yeah. free -ish. I would say around three, three thirty, maybe. I'm just I'm so that'll be about so that'll be around about eight thirty over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. About eight thirty-ish, but. I, the notification I usually I usually put the thumbnail up mid afternoon on a Thursday, and it's supposed mm. to let them know once you hit the thirty minute mark, it is supposed to send you a whoop ding dong. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're going live, but yeah, sometimes YouTube lies. <laughs> right, no doubt, no doubt. They definitely they're good as about that, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, We're just here to hang out, um, try to enjoy each other, share some information, you know, that sort of thing. Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, Mike does have a question here. Da, 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 da. In color, I just can't get up to the line without getting too dark. 
at the line using using Lin Shaw Mag. Any suggestions? I'm not sure what it says. I think it, I think Mag says in color. I just can't get up to the line without getting too dark at the line using some without getting shame too. mag any suggestions oh is that you using is that you using, using it using a mag you can't oh. you can't get up to the lines you can't get up to when you're coloring what are you saying in color when you're coloring and when you get up to the lines can't you get right up to the lines with your mag because if that's the case go the other way start at your line and come out he says liner shader mag what? using liner shader mag any suggestions hmm in color i just can't get up to the line without getting too using dark. a liner shader liner shader or a mag well what i would say is i'm not sure of the question still yeah but the other thing as well is if, if you haven't got enough needle protrusion out of the end of the cartridge and you can't see where you're going that that is not going to help you at all and sometimes it's easier to instead of working up to your line have a little bit you need a little bit of more of a needle hammer <coughs> and then you can see your needles and instead of going start instead of starting out here and working up to your line is with a pool of ink in front of you is to start at your line and work out so that you work your pool of ink out and you can see where you've started. Sometimes it's easier to do it that way. Okay, uh, I think Raphael is saying, I think he's asking, which would you use? Oh, okay, well, there's a few options. I think, Andy, you were kind of just covering that right there, really. But um, like Andy said, you could take that mag, and um, if this is your line, you could... Throw your needles out a little way so you can see them moving. Boom, 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 boom. Start right in on your line and move out, right? So that you're not going from this way, trying to go up to your line and getting scared that you're going to go over and you wipe and you're still behind and whatnot, or maybe you're spending too much time there. Maybe drop in right here on that line and move out. Boom, 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 boom. Come back over, maybe drop in on that line again, move out. I, I, I'm, again, not sure if I'm reading it right, Andy. This is when I pack it. I, I always get too dark or holidays. Well, if you're packing and you're getting holidays, uh, when you've wiped, you, you're moving too quick. You, you know, the, your machine's a little bit too slow or you're moving too quick because when you're packing and if you're working in a circular motion, I mean, you can be working as slow as that at some points, you, you know, packing right. colour. Yeah, real slow. If you're, go, if, if you're going, If you're going like this, you're going to get all of this. Uh, right. Lots of packing, you're going to get all of this. Packing in, solid packing, slow, slow, slow. Also, your needles might not be quite far enough out, Mike. You might just need to throw your needles out a little bit further. Um, if they're not protruding, you're not penetrating the skin all the way in. Um, and getting dark, I'm assuming that's with... Um, black because i can't see it with color because if you color super saturated if it's blue it's blue it's going to be saturated blue anything other than saturated blue you're getting holidays in it um unless you're trying to whip it out ready for a blend which you'd you'd pack it and then whip it out pack it whip it out pack it whip it out you know ready for coming in other direction you know and blend blend through but yeah. a lot of that seems what you're saying a lot of it is is hand speed but maybe you just need to have them needles a little bit further out so that as the as they're hitting the skin when you pack it they are depositing as much ink as they can in the right place yeah i hope that somewhat helps you out there mike i know it's tricky man sometimes you just got to get out there and keep fighting the good fight and figure out what happens and you're like oh well this thing works but the most important thing i think is that reminding yourself just how slow you really do usually have to move when packing yeah. black or colors of any kind. It's, it's a slow process it really is. That's why any sort of color work, usually it's going to take you longer because it's just 
simple fact of the matter, especially if there's varying colors, kind of constantly jumping between colors and blah, blah, blah. But uh, no less, guys. We are currently at the two-hour mark, and it just worked out that way. It was pretty chill. It was a nice small group this evening. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we got to answer a few questions. It was nice that we had a couple people in here that said, hey, thanks. I think I learned something today, which is awesome. That's cool. Oh, That's just um, any last words, guys? I, yeah, go make sure I'm getting reverb again right here at the end, but it doesn't matter. We're getting off of here, so it don't matter. Go over there if you're still watching. Subscribe to Andy's channel, especially because we have another live stream over there. We're doing on Andy's channel where we get to check out your guys' work like we used to do here. And it's going to go back and forth every few weeks or so, right? But we got to keep yeah. you on our toes. We got to keep ourselves on our toes. <laughs> we don't can't get too stuck in the mud about things. So go check out Andy's channel, the underscore tattoo underscore studio. Subscribe there. Critique my tattoos at gmail.com. Guys, don't be afraid to send your work in. Um, yeah. We wouldn't be able to do this if you guys didn't do that. So we also appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And remember, we're just two idiots with two dumb opinions. That's uh, it. And that's it. Yeah. So it's... you take it, you leave it. It's totally up to you. I will leave that scrolling at the bottom of the screen until we leave here. We go back over to the chat real quick. Say goodbye to the last minute to the last few people. Yeah. Jason. See you later, yeah. Jason. No problem, Amber. Um, five dollars pop, and Andy will say, baby oil. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting, I feel like I'm getting abused, dude. <laughs> and I'm a cock. Uh, yeah, look, Danny's already, he's got you, he's got your lines now, man. He's yeah. got you down to a T, but uh, all right, guys. Well, until next time, we'll see you guys this Wednesday or no, this Thursday. Yep, this Thursday around 8 30. UK time <laughs> uh, or 3.30 here Eastern Standard Time. I think I'm confused to be more than I need to. All right. We'll see you guys later. See you guys later.